I decided to finally make a sign for the front of our studio now that we have CNC capabilities. So I'm carving our logo out of some inch and a quarter old growth pine that we salvaged while rebuilding our staircase. This is three stair treads trimmed down and edge glued to make a 32 inch wide Maltese cross. The sign is going to be in two parts with some iron hardware linking them together. I do all of my 3D modeling in Fusion 360 and for the first time I'm going to try out the manufacture tab to generate my G-code. I was feeling a lot of trepidation about switching from Carbide Create because Fusion has an overwhelming array of functions and doesn't seem to be designed for entry-level CNC hobbyists. But after a successful trial run cutting some styrofoam, I realized that the bar for entry really isn't as high as I thought. I'm just going to do a very basic rundown on the process to show you that it really isn't that hard to get started. This isn't going to be an in-depth tutorial of fusion manufacturing, but more of a look, even I can do it kind of demo before we get into the fun stuff. Once you have your model, either one you've created or something you've imported from elsewhere, switch over to the manufacture environment. With the body you want to carve selected, choose Create New Setup. Go to Stock Point and choose where you want the origin located, generally the bottom left corner. Move to the Stock tab and select Fixed Size Box. Enter the dimensions of your stock. By default, it will create a box just large enough to fit your model. Now choose your first operation. For this project, we're going to do a 2D pocket. Select the geometry that you want to work on and Fusion will show you the bottom face of the material that will be removed. Now move over to the Tool tab and select the bit you plan to use. Since I'm still new to feeds and speeds, I used Carbide Create to generate some suggested values for spindle speed, step over, depth of pass, and feed rate. There are a lot of other fields in Fusion for you to play with, but don't feel like you have to mess with all of them. Some will be calculated based on other values that you set, and others are just conservative defaults. In the Passes tab, set your maximum step over, then check multiple step downs and set your depth of pass to something you think your machine can handle. I created a second toolpath to cut out the sign using the contour operation in much the same way. When you're done obsessing over every field and drop down menu in your toolpaths and you're ready to throw caution to the wind, click OK. Right click on your setup and choose Post Process. This is going to generate the G code, but Fusion needs to know what system is going to be interpreting it so that it can format it correctly. I'm using a Shape Oco, so I'll select Carbide 3D and click OK. This old pine isn't the best wood to work with because it's full of sap and it gums up your tools, but I've got a ton of it and it's pretty when it's cleaned up. It's also been a part of this building for the last hundred years, so I feel like I can't let it go to waste. I botched my first attempt at cutting out the upper portion of the sign because I didn't secure my work well enough and it shifted on me. The second attempt was also botched because the Z-axis rails got clogged with sappy sawdust and it failed to retract when it was supposed to, which caused it to lose its zero and subsequently cut way too deep on the next movement. At this point I decided I needed to build a dust collection system before trying again. So I 3D printed this dust boot. I'll include a link to the 3D files in the video description in case anyone wants to replicate this. The vacuum I'm using isn't powerful enough to pick up the larger chips, but it's enough to keep the air clean and to keep the rails from getting clogged.
West System Epoxy makes a very durable coating, but it doesn't hold up to UV light for long. This sign will be underneath a balcony where it won't get direct sunlight until late in the afternoon, but I'm also going to do a top coat of exterior clear lacquer after I add some accents with latex paint. Thank you.